This is a very unconventional design here. Welcome to the future of business aviation. Definitely feels like I'm sitting in the future right now. Today I'm taking you inside eBase. It's Europe's largest business aviation event. Welcome to Geneva. This is the place where massive deals get signed and companies show off their latest innovations. I'm exploring how technology is shaping the future of how we will fly. It's a new configuration. I'm even meeting F1 legends Susie Wolf and Toto Wolf. If I could just ask you one question too, that'd be great. People are always going to travel. And all of this isn't just for us aviation geeks and tech nerds. I'm taking you inside private jets. I want to know what 10 million or 100 million dollars gets you. And later I'm taking you inside the Phenom 300. This is the most popular selling business jet. This can be a table, but it can also become your TV. This is so comfortable. I'm ready to go to Los Angeles now. I also want to know the biggest trends in the future of travel. So you literally have couches, you have loungers, you have a DJ in the back. And if you're tired of flying business or first class, Welcome to Qatar Executive. So here is what money can buy. The aviation industry aims to be net neutral by 2050. So I'm also asking executives and innovators how they plan to actually achieve that goal. Can sustainability exist within private jet industry? So first up, is this a helicopter or a jet? So I'm with Stefano, who is a sales director for Cirrus Aircraft. What do we have here? We have the beautiful SF-50, the Vision Jet. It is the only personal jet with a single engine and parachute. So this has a parachute for the passengers, just in case? No, as a parachute for the whole airplane. How does that work? It works that uh, if the pilot has a very critical situation, so there is a handle, you pull the handle, a rocket will extract a parachute, and the airplane will come down with the airplane, with the people inside. That is next generation technology, it sounds like. Absolutely. Well, can we go inside? Sure, please. Wow, so I'm already inside. This is beautiful. It's so luxurious, so spacious. And you're kind of torn because it has somewhat of a helicopter vibe. You have like these really big round windows. And even from the outside, at first you're kind of like, it looks like a helicopter, but no, it is in fact a jet. It can see up to five adults, including the pilot and up to two kids. But this is a beautiful, very, very spacious in here. What's most fascinating is that if there is an emergency, you're probably in a good position because it's the only aircraft which has a parachute. Next, I wanna see what's possible if you convert an Airbus into, well, a more fun and luxurious experience. This is a company that will actually outfit your plane. They'll deck it out however you want. So this is a concept to show just what is possible. One thing that they've seen in terms of the next generation, they want a plane where they can party. So you literally have couches, you have loungers, you have a DJ in the back, you've got, of course, champagne. And this is really interesting to me. Instead of a traditional kind of very tight cockpit where you're trying to maximize the space in the back for passengers, they've actually extended a traditional cockpit. They've made it way bigger and literally added loungers and couches the inspiration is actually kind of like you're on a yacht. When you're on a yacht, sometimes you want to hang out in the front of it and look out at the ocean. More than 300 passengers can traditionally be on this plane, but now it's decked out for maybe a family or a group of friends. And what's really fascinating is there's multiple bedrooms. There's a massive dining room. Come to the back and there's literally two massage chairs. Imagine that, getting a massage during a long haul flight. What are the uh, trends right now we're seeing in design build out? Uh, here we're showcasing uh, two models. We have here a model of an Air Airbus A220. This uh, design is called Sky Retreat. And as you see, it's clearly inspired by the beautiful, elegant design by yachts and also by the nature. And this, this model is, um, this design is specifically uh, made for the younger generation. We see the entertainment is actually getting bigger. There's like the integration into the cabin. We are moving away from the old uh, designs into more cooler designs. I went backstage to meet F1 legends, Susie Wolf and Toto Wolf, and I had the chance to meet them. I just asked Toto and Susie Wolf a question about sustainability. I mean, sustainability has been a big theme. I want to know each of your thoughts in terms of, you know, what needs to happen for a sustainable future. I think in, in the end, it comes down to making an effort in every area of our lives and being conscious of it. There's decisions we take on a daily basis that we try to aim towards being more sustainable. Obviously, our jobs mean we're, we're traveling a lot and we're in an industry which is maybe not seen as the most sustainable, but I think we can make big strides forwards and also inspire others to, to see that there are possibilities in 
even the smallest of decisions. When you look at Formula One, I mean, it's counterintuitive with sustainability. Uh, cars running around in circles for pure entertainment purposes. But the truth is, we are trailblazers in the industry. We have introduced a very efficient and powerful hybrid engines. Uh, we're going to run 100% sustainable fuel with uh, half electric, half combustion um, propulsion. And by 2030, there's going to be one and a half billion cars that hopefully going to run um, the fuels that we develop. It's really exciting to actually be able to come backstage and actually meet them and ask them a question. Will we soon travel through the skies like the Jetsons? This could be the future of how you get around. To be in here is really, really cool. It definitely feels like I'm sitting in the future right now, not like I'm in a traditional jet. Part of it is the design, and then part of this is my brain saying, what is this? Is this a helicopter? Is it a jet? I guess it's a mix of both. So I'm with Daniel, the founder of Lilium. Daniel, what do we have here? Hi, nice to meet you. Uh, this is the world's first vertical takeoff and landing electric jet aircraft. What inspired you to make the first uh, electric jet? Well, I was watching YouTube videos uh, of troop transporters that could take off and land vertically. And it's been a few seconds that I thought to myself, if you make this electric and make it smaller and more affordable, it's a perfect means of transportation. And after that, it's been a billion dollars and a long and crazy ride <laughs> to even get to this point. So the way this works is that you have batteries here in the side of the fuselage, 10 batteries in total and they are powering a total of 30 electric jet engines. They work the same way like your hair dryer. They blow out air to the back, but very powerful and very low noise. And these engines can lift the aircraft vertically and then propel it forward. And as it flies forward, it generates lift with the wings like any other airplane. So you basically have a business jet cabin, but you can do the mission of a helicopter and take off and land vertically. Realistically, how far away are we from actually seeing this in the sky? So this airplane, exactly as you see it here, is right now being in production for the molds. Uh, we are then starting end of this year to do the final assembly of the certification aircraft. And then we're going to see it from late summer 24 to end of 25. To Daniel, already it feels insanely futuristic. Yes, and that was our intent to make it feel futuristic, but at the same time make you feel home and in a warm environment. So you will see that all the lines here are rounded, you don't have sharp edges, and it's basically designed to make you feel like in a spacious capsule. Talk to me about what kind of price range we're looking at for the Lilium. So for this aircraft, it's a limited edition, a Pioneer version, which is limited to 50. Here we're talking about a price range of 7 to 10 million, depending on uh, how you select uh, your equipment. Uh, what kind of flight range are we talking on this? So with the market entry battery, which is in production right now, we will achieve roughly 175 kilometers operating range. Okay. And uh, the unique thing about electric airplanes compared to cars is that you can upgrade the battery. So you're not stuck with that battery, but three years later you get a better battery that gives you 250 or 300 kilometers range. How does the charging work? The charging works exactly the same way like in your electric car. So you have the same charging plug, a supercharger next to your landing site, and you just plug it. Even the ones in my garage, I can, I can plug in. It, technically it would work, um, but of course uh, you want to have a more powerful charger than in your garage. Thank you so much. Listen. You're welcome. Wonderful. All right, I've now come to Embraer. I'm about to go inside one of the most popular business jets. This is made by, of course, Embraer. This is what you see. So you have multiple different seats. You have about six people who can sit here. You have two up front. And then, of course, you have a lavatory in the back. The Phenom 300 is the best-selling light jet for 11 years in a row. So this is a popular one. This is your position for takeoff and landing. Once you're in flight, you can bring up your tray table set up your laptop, take some meetings. This is really cool. This is how the armrest comes out in an effort to make it a very comfortable seat, but also to save space. So you'll actually pull out the armrest like this, and then you just bring it down like that. That's very sly, very sleek. I really like that. Very easy and seamless to open the blinds, just like that. What about the media system? This is really cool. I haven't seen anything quite like this, but after takeoff and after landing, you can actually have a screen that comes down and it can face the direction that you're facing, and you can play your own entertainment, your own Netflix shows, my YouTube channel, whatever you want, you can put on here. And you can also play music that will play throughout the aircraft. That is pretty cool. Unlike other jets in its category, this one is actually quite unique because you have a window in the lavatory, so you can always 
Look outside as you wash your hands. If you do want some privacy while you're on the toilet, you can always close the blinds like this. But I mean, you're literally up in the sky. I don't think anyone's looking. Definitely a nice way to travel in style and get to your next destination. I'm sitting in Airbus's ACH helicopter. This is a helicopter that can seat up to 10 passengers and it has an endurance of four and a half hours. Uh, what makes the ACH-160 so unique? So it makes it so unique because actually it's our last generation aircraft that embeds 60 new patterns. There's a lot of new technology in this aircraft. For example, we have a automatic assisted takeoff. So the pilot basically has almost nothing to do uh, for the helicopter to uh, take off and then uh, be in translation to its destination and brings it to 50 feet to the edge of its arrival point where the pilot just have to take the commands and put it uh, on ground. Do you say like a semi-autonomous here because you know it is so high advanced and high tech that you need limited human I guess labor here. Now you still need the uh, yeah, I pilot for the flight but the flight envelope protection with the four axes of the pilot of Airbus helicopters which is famously known for its flight envelope protection and the automatic assisted takeoff uh, makes it really uh, easy for the pilot to concentrate on uh, the exterior uh, of the aircraft and uh, the eventual uh, situational awareness and workload that instead of having to manage a lot of things into the aircraft. So it makes the workload of the pilot really reduced to a level that increased safety globally to the aircraft. I've now arrived. I'm going to go inside this. This is the Citation M2. This is a really good jet for like your first jet. This is in the same caliber as the Honda jet or the Phantom 100. Let's go inside and see what your first jet might look like. So I've come inside the Citation and this is actually a really beautiful jet. It's very, um, it's very elevated design. It's, uh, it's weird to be in an aircraft that is so small, but also like also somewhat spacious. I love the interior. I can't remember seeing an aircraft like this, which has such a beautiful interior. I wouldn't mind taking this to my next destination. You can comfortably fit five passengers on this jet. And then over here, you have uh, another seat for crew. Of course, there is no bathroom on here, so you do need to make sure you go before you take off. If that's too small, no worries. Next up, it's the Citation CJ3+. Plus. Welcome on. This can have up to 10 people total. So you have four here, another two here, and then of course, some pilots. What's interesting about this one is that there is a toilet. So you don't have to hold anything. You can actually uh, use the toilet on this one. I will say that it's actually really beautiful. I'm really impressed with the interior here. This is definitely a nice way to travel in style. This is a solar and electric aircraft that can go to the stratosphere. Now it's currently in development, but I get to actually test it right now with the CEO and founder himself. Let's go. You are ready? Yes, I'm ready. Okay, full power. No, no, no. Let, let me check. I help you. Huh? Voila, we are flying now. Oh. No, 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 no. Oh. We've taken off. We're, we're flying from Geneva Airport, and this is pretty crazy. This is pretty cool. It's quite exciting. I leave you the, the stick now. Be careful. Don't. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And now we land. <laughs> no, please don't make me land. Please don't make me land. Oh, uh, no, we will try to land now. We will try to land. I think the control, my control. I'm scared. I have a big imagination, so simulations like this can actually really scare me. Oh, God. We do a pull up. No, 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 no. Pull up. Yeah. Uh, yes. My name is Raphael Donjon and uh, my project is Solar Stratos. The goal of this project is to, the final goal is to reach the stratosphere uh, just powered by solar energy. And when is this going to happen? Where, where do you stand right now? Uh, now we have the plane. The plane uh, is flying since five years now. And uh, we hope that this year we can go to 10,000 meters. And uh, then we will see. Uh, when we can do that flight, maybe in 24, maybe in 25. Now what we are doing, nobody did before. Yes. So this is exploration. This is a pioneer spirit. So we don't know if even we can do it because it's a, it's an adventure. For those who don't know, what exactly is defined as the stratosphere? You have troposphere, you have tropopause, and just after is the stratosphere. And in Switzerland, the stratosphere starts in summer, like at 16 or 18 meters. The goal of the stratos is really to show to the young generation that in the world of tomorrow, it will still be possible to fly, to have dreams, but without noise and without CO2, we will still protect the climate. Thank you so much. You're welcome.
I'm discovering the most innovative aircraft like this. Is this a helicopter or a plane? I'm with Tibu of Ascendance. What do we have here? Oh, thank you very much for being here. So what we have here is the eVTOL aircraft that we are developing. It's an aircraft that takes off vertically like a helicopter and then flies horizontally like a plane. So it's basically you taking off vertically using the eight rudders that you have in the wings there. And to do that, you're using electricity battery and then once in cruise mode you you do what we call a transition which is going from the vertical flight to the horizontal flight and then you use the, those two propellers to fly you know like a conventional plane so is it a helicopter or a plane it's actually both it's at the crossroads between helicopter and a plane typically a plane needs momentum so if you're up in the air obviously you're cruising but you don't have momentum so does it kind of transition over a short period of time between the two yes that's exactly it we should hire you as our engine aerodynamic engineer uh -huh. so we, we are taking a vertically and then we are gaining some, gain, gaining, sorry, some speed to switch from a lift which is entirely provided by the router wow. to a lift which is entirely provided by the wings. Wow. Once we have enough speed, enough momentum, as you just said, exactly. And how many passengers would this hold? It's one pilot plus four passengers. So it's a five-seat aircraft. Uh, what kind of uh, range would it have as a plane? It's a kind of a regional aviation aircrafts, which means that uh, you have 400 kilometers of range. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. First stop, the G700. The G700 is a $75 million business jet. It can fit as many as 19 people. It has long range. It can even fly from New York to India. Welcome to the 13 passenger jet. You have four seats there. That's a nice living area. You have a couch for three people, and then you have another six spots here. This is where you can have a nice meal, dine, play cards, work from your laptop. So you have a lot of different options during your flight. Inside the back, you have a beautiful shower. You also have this, which is quite efficient and smart. So this is your vanity chair. You can get ready, you have your mirror here, and under, you have your laboratory. Very elegant, but also efficient use of space, along with your sink, where you have plenty of space to get ready, make sure you're looking good before you land. So that's the back of the jet. In the next compartment, you have this. This is your bed. It's actually very nice very nice and comfortable and cozy and it's actually very nice and spacious as well this is a great way to catch some rest during your flight there's just one rule you cannot be in bed during takeoff you're gonna have to sit in one of the 13 seats once you pass the bedroom you get into this this is where you are going to have your meals this table actually becomes a full dining table so you can sit and enjoy a nice meal during the flight in the front of the jet you have this beautiful kitchen where food can be prepared drinks can be prepared and what's really interesting is that in between each compartment, you have doors, so you have privacy. In addition to all the other amenities, you've got an oven and a microwave and of course, refrigerator and all of that. If the large cabin is too big for you, fear not. They also have a mid cabin. Let's go check this out. This is the G280. It's a mid-sized jet. This one costs about $25 million, and it's known to be pretty fuel efficient. The lavatory also includes extra windows to make it feel spacious and more luxurious. The G280 is definitely a little bit more intimate. You won't find a shower in there, but it's definitely still next level luxury. And what's nice is you automatically are reclined during takeoff. You don't have to wait till after takeoff to recline. So this is gonna be your tray table. But of course, during takeoff and landing, your tray table will need to be put away. You've got your charger for your phone and you've got a little electronic section here. In the back of the jet, you have a place for storage. Over here, you have a closet for blankets, pillows, of course, peanuts. And then what a beautiful sink. I mean, this is a very nice sink. This isn't something I'm used to like during a flight, having a sink that big. And then this is the laboratory. And to use the laboratory, you're gonna close the door. What's cool is that the toilet also becomes a seat. So I can sit right here, chill during takeoff landing, read a book, and then you can also lift the seat and it becomes your toilet. This is the G800 making its European debut. It's still in the testing phases, but we might see it come to market very soon. It's a bit of a smaller aircraft with a range of 8,000 nautical miles. It's not yet ready to come inside because it has an 
unfinished interior full of test equipment. It's hoping to get its FAA certification soon. For those who don't know, talk a little bit about what JetX is. What do you do? JetX for them is a full platform, which like they arrange for them all the services on the ground or on the air in order to accommodate all the requirements. As you can see, JetX is not only it's like a who arranged the, the flight, we are thinking about the guests, which is like the best in it. So, uh, talk to me about some of the trends you're seeing right now within the luxury travel industry. For the past couple of years, we see a massive change in the business jet traveler. Before uh, flying in private jet was mainly oil and gas people. Now we see people coming from crypto, tech company, fashion, so that massive change, just number one. Number two, there's another age section who moved before flying 6 to 70 now we see like most of the traveler like from 25 to 40 years old final question a lot of talk about sustainability uh, can sustainability exist within private jet industry 100 percent like the contribution of the business of the, of the emission is almost 2.4 percent business aviation 0.04 percent so the business aviation is very small contribution one day we could get our packages delivered by a drone like this. My name is Sayed Mohsani, CEO and founder of Arc Aero Systems. The drone side, there are a lot of uh, applications that, for example, the express delivery uh, for e-commerce. So people, when they place orders, more than 50% of people, they want same day delivery. Yeah. So they could use the guys like Amazon or the transport companies, they would use our heavy drone to transport the, the goods that people have um, ordered across the cities to from one distribution center to another and then the final uh, delivery would be with this other smaller drones so, so this is the drone that can actually take 50 or so packages yeah. halfway across the country halfway across the city so this is called mid delivery drone so basically this drone can bring about 50 packages from point a to point b and then once they're at point b then they can be distributed. So this is really good for like maybe rural towns. Or exactly. I'm going inside the fastest ultra long range business jet in the world. In Qatar Executive, they have 15 of this kind of aircraft. This is the Gulfstream G650ER, and it's a favorite amongst the global traveling elite because of the range of capabilities. There's some really cool technology, I'm told, and you can fly from Doha to New York or Doha to Tokyo. I mean, it can literally fly halfway around the world, and it's the fastest way to do so. I'm excited to see what exactly this entails. So this this one in particular can fit up to 13 passengers, two pilots, and one cabin crew. This is the view from the cockpit of the private jet. And what's really cool is that this is completely open. There's not a closed door. So you can actually see out in front of you, kind of like you're on a ship or a yacht but you can see the sky. This is the G650ER. So in this version that I'm currently standing on, it can see up to 10 passengers and that can be converted into six beds. So if you're on a long haul, let's say from Doha to New York, you're definitely gonna wanna sleep, which is why it's important to be able to convert this into a bed. So behind the cockpit, you have the crew galley. Let's see what's inside. You have a lot of places for storage, umbrellas, waters, books admin stuff and then you have a few different other areas this is your refrigerator and if you're on a 16 hour flight obviously you're gonna get hungry you're gonna get thirsty so there's a lot of good storage there for uh, perishables and then storage here and this is all storage storage there's even a freezer for ice cream or for vodka the crew can actually impact the shades there are three things that they can do they can do just open sunlight they can do sheer and this this is blackout for when it's time to sleep especially when it's sunny out now, of course, as a passenger, I can also monitor my own, but it's also nice that the crew has that ability in case I fall asleep and I forget to close my shade. When you're flying private, you obviously want the ability to customize your experience. So you can do a nice recline. That is the nicest recline I've ever had on a plane. That was really nice. It's very relaxing, but of course, with anything in aviation, for safety reasons, you do need to take off with your seat upright. You can even change the direction of the seat. So right now I'm facing forward, but you can also reconfigure this to face backward or even to the side. In the next area of the main cabin, you have this. There's four seats here, and this can become a really pretty spacious dining table. And this is where you can have a nice meal, talk business as you make your way to your destination. To be super efficient with space, this is your counter, but it also becomes your TV, look at that. I also need to mention that this can all become a bed. So remember I said this can actually seat 10 passengers, but it can sleep up to six. 
So if you're on a long flight and you need to get some shut eye, this becomes one of the beds. The back of the jet, you have this. This is a bed and there's even a seat belt so you can strap on. It is important to note that you can't actually take off in bed. The seat belt is more for if you're lying in bed or taking a nap and there's turbulence. This is so comfortable. I'm ready to go to Los Angeles now. And finally, let's go to the lavatory. This is a lavatory for the passengers because we already saw the lavatory for the crew. So this is it. I mean, it's very spacious. It's quite beautiful. And what's really interesting is that you have a big sink, a lot of space for towels and your amenities and things like that. So this becomes like a vanity room. Thanks so much for watching this video. Inside eBase 2023, the future of business aviation is literally happening here. This was a really cool experience for me. Some of my highlights were obviously getting into the cool private jets, but I also liked getting on the Airbus helicopter and learning about some of the upcoming innovation, like how we might be able to go to the stratosphere relying completely on solar energy or that plane that is also a helicopter and seeing the future of drones. But I wanna know, what do you think? What was the coolest part of eBase 2023? Let me know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe.